Greetings, fellow YouTube video viewers. This is Eagle 1023 coming to you from Tampa, Florida. It is Wednesday, October 30th, um, 2013. It's just after 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I want to read this to you. This is the latest commentary from Stephen Bassett over at the Paradigm Research Group, right here, the Paradigm Research Group. Um, and, and for those of you that are not familiar with it, um, they're looking to end, end the truth embargo. And Stephen Bassett is a lobbyist who works on behalf of the citizens of the world to try to, to end this truth embargo, to reveal the facts that we're not alone in, in the galaxy. And I support the PRG. And if you, if you get a chance, check out their website. It's, you know, check this out. And I'll have a link to it in my description below. Um, and I'm going to further comment at, at the end of this. I want to read this uh, commentary that uh, Stephen has put together. Um, I have to say that I'm in total agreement with him. And in fact, it mirrors a lot of what I've said in some of my previous videos. And, and it's pretty obvious now. So well, let me read this to you. It's entitled Disclosure and the State of the Union. Commentary. In the past, I have steadfastly avoided straying too far from the core issues of the ET truth embargo and government abuse of secrecies of secrecy. I'm going to make an exception with this commentary. At the end of this nonpartisan essay, you will find out why. The recent debacle in Washington, D.C. over the budget and debt ceiling is one of many indicators the body politic is suffering from multiple organ failure. Nations, empires, kingdoms, they die the same way people do. No society is perfect. No person is perfectly healthy. Both can withstand the odd dysfunction. When the illness spreads and becomes multiple organ failure, the person dies or is enfeebled. In this case, our society. And I've mentioned that, that the system that, that operates is a cancer. It's a malignant cancer that is metastasized, and it's destroying the host, which is us. It happened to the sun never sets on the British Empire. The Soviet Union was able to sustain multiple system dysfunction well past its shelf life by sheer force of raw suppression but it inevitably blew up into 15 republics, mercifully without too much violence. That, that was good. That was back in the 80s. And, of course, there's the famous and extensively studied collapse of the Roman Empire. What took several hundred years in the time of Rome now can be accomplished in a few decades. That said, it still takes years to achieve the state of affairs in which the U.S. now finds itself. Time enough for too many citizens to not see the process of failure unfold. I think people are waking up now, so... Um, that's a good sign. Not anymore. Eventually, the suffering person realizes they are terminally ill. The American people, thanks in large part to the power of the Internet, are now quite aware their vaunted society is coming apart at the seams. Let's review. The two-party political system, by virtue of bad law, bad judicial decisions, and pure greed for money and power, has frozen into a block of ice. Some say the world will end in fire. <laughs> He's talking ice here. New ideas are strangled in their crib. New political parties are throttled. Independent candidates are crippled. We saw that quite clearly with Ron Paul in the last election. They censored this man because he was gaining support and they did not. He was a threat to the system. Uh, the American education system is slowly imploding with U.S. students collectively falling further behind other nations in every category. That's painfully obvious, folks. The American health care system, well, I guess you can call it that, while satisfactory for the very wealthy, it's collectively one of the worst in the developed industrialized world. It is helping to destroy the middle class, the primary engine of social stability. Health issues are the leading cause of personal bankruptcy. Did you catch that? The leading cause of personal bankruptcy. The massive U.S. military spending, not long ago greater than all other nations in the world combined, all other nations guarantees that fiscal balance and adequate funding in support of the human condition will not be possible. Yeah, it's debt. Unnecessary debt. Along with war spending, massive entitlement commitments made without any effort to control that war spending going back to 1960 now place the nation in immediate debt of $17 trillion with an almost incomprehensible long-term exposure of 80 to $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities. That's with a T, folks. Economic recovery after the 2008-2009 greatest train robbery is a temporary illusion created by an enormous printing of trillions of new money that will eventually lead to inflation and the Fed. We need a public 
monetary system, not a private banking consortium. The investment and standard banking industries have bought politicians to pass laws that have allowed a massive shift of wealth to the upper class and stripping the middle class of pensions, jobs, home values, and home ownership. Virtually no one is held criminally accountable for this. Eventual fines are trivial. Yeah, you'll see it once in a while. There'll be a fine or two, but it's, it's pocket change for these folks. It's pocket change for the thieves. Uh, nobody's held accountable. Behind the confiscation of middle-class assets by the investment banking abuses is the exposure to derivatives, casino debt. Some experts claim this exposure is over $200 trillion. If you're counting, that's over $300 trillion in risk exposures for the U.S. society. We can't pay that back, folks. That's a reality check, as Ben Swan would say. Voting systems in the U.S. are an antiquated joke, with voter turnout one of the lowest in the developed world. This is made worse by a venal policy of one of the political parties to suppress voter turnout in every way possible that would undermine the other political party. It's all just a game to these people. The very infrastructure of the nation, roads, bridges, dams, waterways, power grids, sewers, are falling apart with little funds to fix. Two and a half trillion of investment is needed by 2020. Half-baked efforts and illusionary promises are put forward that few believe sufficient. Yeah, we spend it all on war. We don't have money to, to build our infrastructure. We've spent it on a war machine that destroys things and doesn't build things. American international influence, trust levels, and esteem are declining under a plethora of terrible policies, brutal war measures, and outright stupidity. Stupidity. Can you say NSA? I mean, you know, we're not making friends and influencing people by spying on them, and they get it now. American political institutions, particularly the U.S. Congress, have fallen to record levels of disapproval and distrust in government has polarized the nation, making common sense policies next to impossible. The U.S. dollar, the cornerstone of American financial power, is being circled by a number of nations quite willing to replace or diminish it for their own benefit. There's over 100 nations that are discussing this. The BRIC nations uh, are leading the charge. The U.S. literally submits to this process with profoundly destructive financial decisions year after year. Loss of reserve currency status, all or in part, would trigger significant inflation. Again, do away with the Federal Reserve. Uh, American manufacturing jobs are disappearing by being shoved offshore or replaced by low-paying service jobs at minimum wage. The gap between the rich and poor grows, and the American middle class is diminished. This is a recipe for violence and disorder in the most heavily armed nation in the world. The criminal system, I think, I think he meant to say the criminal system of justice, is antiquated, extraordinarily expensive, and hamstrung by absurd laws which have created the highest level of incarceration in the world. The food industry is being taken over by a consortium of companies led by Monsanto that intend to own a re-engineered food and seed supply designed to force the use of their own pesticides in mass quantities. Few things are more representative of the concept of system failure than the losses in the honeybee population. Colony collapse disorder. That's what we're witnessing on a, on a grand scale in America, <laughs> not just the bee colonies. Growing evidence connects CCD to the actions of companies like Monsanto, and you can throw in Bayer for good measure. Easily the most dangerous corporation in the world today, the environmental impact will be devastating. The government does nothing. Huge corporate spending thwarts citizen activism. Yeah, money talks in this corrupt system, this cancer. Lastly, a secret empire was built to service the 10 plus trillion in adjusted dollars. Cold War, it's acknowledged, and addressed the presence of extraterrestrials, non-human intelligence, engaging the planet, which is not acknowledged. This empire has become a world unto itself with a low opinion, perhaps justifiable, of politicians, meaning senators, congresspersons, the president and their staff. Just yesterday, the White House indicated the NSA had not informed the president about the surveillance of foreign heads of state's phone calls. This empire is vast, out of control, and in, not, in dire need of overhaul and reform. That's what I believe. It's the shadow government that runs the spy agencies. It's not our government. They tell our government what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. I believe that our government's blackmailed from politicians to Supreme Court justices to, to CEOs of big corporations. I think this country is a mess this agency, these agencies need to be dismantled. They're not saving anybody. They're, they're harming us. In fact, they will be the demise of what's left of the republic. Read enough? 
If a partial list, it's a partial list, but the point is made. Why am I telling you this? The children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of the baby boomers are more likely to inherit a greatly diminished rather than a viable society moving forward unless something very powerful, very profound intervenes to short-circuit the multitude of current trends leading to the emasculation of America. What could possibly be sufficiently powerful to alter the worldview of political institutions, corporations, and 300-plus million people overnight and open the door to multi-system reform? The usual candidate is a war equal to the magnitude of distress. The last version of that scenario was World War II. Sadly, any war worthy of the present dilemma would destroy the world itself, the World War III scenario that some are pushing for. Um, I don't believe it's going to happen. I won't put that out there. Um, I think that we're, we've moved beyond that. What does that leave? Disclosure. Every day the citizens of Earth are denied the truth. They are not alone in the galaxy as sentient life. That a vast new world awaits them when that truth is out in the open. A world where, once again, all things are possible. Is one more day closer to the end of the American dream, the 21st century nightmare study after study projects. Disclosure will be the most profound event in human history. Hear, hear. It is an inevitable, but it will be soon, but will it be soon enough? Excuse me. All who have a basic understanding of this have a decision to make. Stand up and support the disclosure advocacy movement or stand down and hope for the best. Stephen Bassett, Los Angeles, November 29, 2013. Uh, I commend Stephen Bassett for this. Uh, this is one of the better commentaries I've read. In fact, one of the best commentaries I've read in quite some time. Um, and Stephen is right. We have to shift our frequency. We have to readjust our thinking. and We have to prepare ourselves for disclosure. Um, I don't believe government's going to disclose. I think it will be, um, it will be the people. There, and, and if it is government, it certainly will not be the U.S. government um, because they're being told to keep their mouth shut and they don't step outside the box. So there are very few members in government will step outside the box, box will take the risk. Um, but he's right. Um, the world is in dire straits and we have a lot of work to do. And this disclosure of the truth, the fact that we are not alone in the galaxy, in the universe, would be the catalyst that could spark a renaissance for all of us. Um, I support Stephen Bassett. I have in the past, you know, expressed my concern about him uh, back when the disclosure hearings were held at the end of April, beginning of May. I put a video out shortly thereafter where I was... Uh, where I stated I was uncomfortable with Stephen Bassett and Dr. Stephen Greer and a few other members of the disclosure movement. Um, and I have to say that I made an error in judgment where Stephen Bassett is concerned. I've been following him, and I've watched several videos of interviews that he's been involved with, and I've read his work at PRG, which I highly recommend, by the way, folks. Um, and I have to say, um, I think Stephen Bassett really does care and I think that he's making an effort to, to bring about this needed change. Um, here's a, the Paradigm Research Group. Um, this is the, the website. It's www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Um, I'm a member. I, I receive the emails from them regularly. And this is a great, great site. Um, I, I respectfully submit that everybody check it out. Um, if you're interested in what they're up to, and support them. I mean, they're pushing for this paradigm shift, this renaissance, you know, the truth to be finally revealed. The, the, the potential is enormous. Everything from free energy to um, cures to cancer. Um, it's up to us, folks. But um, anyway, I wanted to, to put this out there, and hopefully you'll share this with other people. Um, again, please feel free to leave your comments below. And I will have a link to the PRG in the description part of this video. Um, nice job, Stephen. I have to commend you for, for putting this out there. And um, I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the future. Um, again, folks, let's support them. Um, I'm hoping he puts another uh, petition, uh, forwards another petition to the White House. And maybe this time we can get, you know, a million people to sign it instead of 25,000. Um, it's time, folks. Um, let's do our part, okay? This is Eagle 1023. I'm going to sign out here. I'm coming on to 15 minutes. So, um, again, I'll see you. Uh, I'll put another video out soon. Bye-bye.